but it's very difficult because at the moment Andy Farrell's not going anywhere. So for for someone like Raj, like he that he wants an international job. Like he's an unbelievable coach. Mm -hmm. He's proved himself. Joe presents House of Rugby United Rugby Championship together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Hello and welcome back to House of Rugby together with Bank of Ireland. I'm Greg O'Shea and today I'm joined by Lindsay Peet as always. How are you, Lindsay? Good morning, how are you? Good morning, I'm great. And we have the lovely Louis Ludic back in store today. How are you, lad? Ah, good, thanks. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Appreciate no, thanks it. for coming down. We appreciate you coming because you're a busy man. How is the business going? Yeah, going going well, thanks. Yeah, we've got a busy week. Um, we're in Dublin the whole week. So thanks for allowing me to stay at your house to, to bunk this week. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a good night out last night, didn't we? <laughs> what do you mean, Lindsay, we didn't go out? Calm down. Can I tell you, listen, right? If it's not Mark Hansen you're invited out, it's Louis Ludic. So where's my invite? I'm tired Anytime. of you playing hard to get with this. Anytime you want to go out, Lindsay, I'll bring you out. <laughs> you wouldn't be able for me. You wouldn't be able to keep up. I wouldn't, I You'd wouldn't. You'd be goosed after an hour. Yeah, of You'd course. Like time out. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, we can talk about going out for ages. Let's talk about the rugby. Um, and before we even kind of get into the matches of the weekend, we want to give a shout out to Scotland and especially uh, Doddy Weir, who passed away at the weekend, and his family and his friends, legend of the game, um, who passed away with motor neuron disease and... It's a very sad loss for World Rugby, but he had an unbelievable character, an unbelievable career, and uh, I think World Rugby lost someone big today. So I don't know if any of you had any encounters with him along the way. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity of meeting him, but I've been involved in a couple of charities that that's in, he, under his name and for motor neuron disease, and he's done brilliantly um, in that side of things. And like it's it's very very sad you can see the impact he's made and hopefully in his name that can continue and there'll be a, a cure one day so it's like he's done some great great work and hopefully that will his charity will continue to just to grow and just be very very successful yeah definitely well said louis and something a bit more positive uh our very own producer pat welcomed a baby girl into the world in the weekend so he's not here producing behind the scenes we have Jason producing today so congratulations Pat and uh, best luck to you and your family with, with, the, with the new kid on the way and um, let's move into the rugby for the weekend so we had a derby Munster versus Connacht it was on in Thoman Park Munster got the win thank God 24-17 it was a good battle did you watch it Lindsay? I did it was a real uh, real derby wasn't it there was you know Craig Casey got Calvin Nash in there early and he's fist pumping and there's lots of motivation and um, the only thing which was kind of epitomised the the difference kind of with Leinster and we'll cover them and Munster was like you know Pete O'Malley's there in the back row do you know and I was like think I, I really felt from like you come back off international duty to club you're broken and you're like I could deal with the rest this week and fair play to me got stuck in but it's kind of a sign that you know, points are necessary for Munster at this stage of the season. So a great win. It was a real battle. You know, there was lots of little mini fisty cuffs and no one was giving anyone an inch, but uh, a great win for them at home. It was a great win. Did you, did you catch it yourself, Louis? Yeah, yeah, I watched a bit of it. It was quite a lot of, a few, quite a bit of mistakes. It was, the weather wasn't great and quite windy, but it's, um, it's a typical derby. Yes. But it's so weird to see Munster at ninth. Like if you look at that log, you, you're just used to them being like, Top second dogs. top mm. you know on the top four so like you said like with um so many internationals playing you see they're quite desperate for points and they would be hurting they would want to climb that ladder and, and get up to the top four so you can see they they're just very motivated yeah, yeah what did you make of that a lot of internationals coming back like Tyg Byrne, peter manny as you mentioned lindsay yeah. Werv. Leinster didn't really play many of their internationals at all and we'll get on to Leinster game after this but is that kind of a sign that Munster are desperate to get up that table? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> they they would definitely and they're a proud team like just in history they are so rich in history and they're always in the finals always up there so they would be very desperate and like they're so much proud in that team mm -hmm. so I can just imagine like in that changing room, in that those meeting rooms with that amount of talent and characters in that team, they just want to get up there. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, they just want to want to want to grow. Yeah, Ty Byrne was interviewed after he got man of the match. As always, I don't know how many match man of the matches this guy has at this <laughs> stage. He looked tired though after his couple of weeks. Let's say playing, playing international duty, coming back playing for Munster, but got man of the match anyway. And he was saying it's all hands on deck at the moment for Munster because mm -hmm. they can't really have any weeks off. Because they're only into ninth now on the table. They have three wins from eight, which 
interestingly enough, Connacht only have three wins from eight as well. And Connacht are sitting down at 13th, I think, or in around there. So obviously Munster are just getting those bonus points and just scraping it through. Um, so what do you make of all that, Lindsay? It's good, but like my only concern is like, yes, Ty Byrne and his consistency. And, and you would expect that. Well, obviously there's the tiredness, but you'd expect a player of his calibre. And he's he's so confident in the moment and he's just grown week in, week out, whether it's an Irish jersey or a Munster jersey, especially in that leadership role and really, you know, making good things happen naturally. You know, he's such a great rugby brain um, and same with Pete O'Mahony. My only concern for Munster is, you know, rugby is a war of attrition, especially now for the likes of those guys in the pack. So down the line in Champions Cup now, are you going to lose guys to injury because of their load? Do you know that's the only balance? Like, so I know we need points. Well, you guys need points. I'm not a wee <laughs> moment for me. Um, but in saying that, that would be my only concern. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yes, points are good, but like you do have to manage players. And I, you know, I was chatting with Jason before we got on air and like P.O. Manny got a, a bit of a knock and I thought it was sometimes you get those knocks with just tired, you're just tired minds, tired bodies. So that'd be my only concern. But obviously you have Keith Harris to come back. Um, Andrew, Andrew Conway, come Conway like some big names to come back. So you could be lucky at everything, you know, nothing happens and everything, every everyone comes back at the right time. Yeah, what do you think, so. Lou? You've been yeah. there and bought the T-shirt and the whole lot. How are the boys feeling, do you think, coming off international duty and playing club? I think there must be a reason why they came back for this. I know Champions Cup's coming up, but they must be eyeing space somewhere for the guys to rest. There's normally, I think, maybe over Christmas, maybe there's a time there that they'll say, OK, let's get stuck in now. Let's let's grab those points. You guys can get, get a couple of weeks. Maybe they'll rest them over that time. There must be a reason behind it and there must mm -hmm. be a plan in place. So, you, it's always a bit of a risk, especially like you look at Leinster arresting so many players, and they mu but they must be a plan and that they've got going for the next couple of weeks. So. It's, it's really interesting to see because usually mm -hmm. the IRFU are like everyone does the same thing in the clubs, the internationals are playing or they're not playing, and now it seems like they all got to do their own thing. Leinster arrested all their top lads. You could see on Instagram somewhere away golfing, somewhere away on holidays. I know Caitlin Doris is Seems in America. In the States, yeah, it's like I was back. like, whoa, okay, fair play. Look, yeah. they had a good few weeks, but then the Munster lads are back in training on Monday morning, and it's, and they they look like they're. I just thought they looked a bit tired, and I'm a bit worried now going to the Champions Cup because I did say a few weeks ago that Munster are going to do really well in the Champions Cup, so I need my lads to be fresh. I'll bring you salt <laughs> and pepper. I'll bring salt and pepper for those words, okay? Yeah, <laughs> but Stephen Ferris also said afterwards that he's like, as you're saying there. Louis they probably plant, picked a week like around Christmas or maybe after Champions Cup or maybe after the Six Nations that these guys will get a rest but it's kind of that injury territory is it or yeah. am I just being a bit pessimistic yeah no there's always the risk of injury and guys getting tired but Champions Cup it's just different so whenever you almost forget about mm -hmm. the tiredness whenever you it's almost like test match unfortunately I've never played test but I can just imagine like being in a Champions Cup you just get that extra energy that that's vibe around the club and you can just see everything's lifted. Yeah. So I think that will maybe motivate them a little bit more and then just get through those two weeks and then get maybe a rest after that. Yeah, well, I'm hoping Peter Manny isn't actually uh, seriously injured because he went off. Yeah, no, we think maybe a broken nose, not like maybe, but like, yeah, just yeah. a bit of a tackle from a tackle. So okay, hopefully. Hope, hopefully you're all right, Peter. Um, but talking about the actual game itself, we had a couple of big moments in it. So Calvin Nash got a try. He's playing really well. Uh, Roman Salanoa, John Ryan got back in the score sheet. Wasn't that lovely now lovely after all his, yeah, after yeah. all the messing and going to Wasps and, you know, not a good time for him, but it was lovely to see him on the score sheet now and back in a Munster jersey. And yeah. yeah, it just seems right, doesn't it? John? Yeah, it seemed, yeah, it was like, it was a lovely moment for him and he come back and I'd say everything just settled for him, you know, yeah. it was, you know, he could relax again, you know, because it was, I'd say, a tough time moving the family over and all that. So. Exactly. He's a young kid and he's a wife and stuff. So I'd say yeah. it's quite stressful outside the rugby pitch for him. So we're delighted for you, John Ryan. Niall Scannell got in the score sheet as well, um, which was great to see. But the Munster pack, I think, were, were mauling very well. I thought that they were, were together as a unit. Much The backs did well as well, but I thought the fours kind of won the game for Munster. What do you make of it, Lindsay? Yeah, it was just the pack always needs to forward, you know, like, you know, Connacht are in that position as well. They're fighting for points. So I just thought it was like the pack, you know, they stood up, they mauled, they did what they did well. It was a crappy night, like you said, yeah. and it's difficult to get good balls. So I thought they handled it well. I think it was 10 all, wasn't it, at half time? So, yeah. you know, there's like loads of errors. So yeah. it was nice to keep the ball. And that's what you want your pack to do, you know, yeah. make good game line, keep the ball, put the opposition on the back foot. And then, yeah, when needs be, go out to the backs. And yeah, shout out to Calvin Nash now, I think, you know, from his emerging Ireland day. And, you know, we keep hearing his name coming up. So hopefully he gets a bit of consistency, which he hasn't in a Munster jersey. So, yeah, yeah I think it was a good sign, though. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to malls. 
was, but it was a good sign that they seemed really tight and cohesive and that their lineup moves just worked and they scored two mall tries, I think. So that's yeah. a sign of a team that are really well together, isn't it? Well, I think, again, like we saw it with Ireland with Paul O'Connell and like, um, like Leamy, you would see Leamy then bringing that, you know, just precision and clarity and consistency and I think it's essential for set piece because on a bad day if you're losing line outs it just really it messes with your head to be honest so you really build momentum and your uh, confidence when you're winning line out and mall tries and when you set up your mall quickly to be honest when a mall is set up an opposition you cannot stop that <laughs> so I think you know uh, they really kind of looked at Connacht's Achilles heel and really kept going at it and at it and that's good that's yeah. what you want to see and talking about the back line Louis um, I was personally really impressed with Anton Frisch I think he's a lovely player. He's doing the kind of little silky things that only really a rugby mind would notice, like little facilitating passes and controlling the defensive line. What do you make of him? Yeah, no, he's a brilliant player. He did very, very well. But like in a, in a, in a game like that, whenever the weather's not great, you, you need your forwards to perform. And the backs, they, they did what they could. Like they obviously played really well, and especially he did very well. But the forwards, I thought, was just phenomenal. And they just dominated up front. And that obviously made it a little bit easier for the backs. But especially nice like that you need your forwards and they've got some players up front there so it, it really helped well, yeah. I think Dermot Barron come on didn't he uh, Dogbo come on again Jeremy um, Lockman came on yeah Jeremy yeah. Lockman so it was lovely John Ryan was there uh, Sal Noah I thought did really well really well in the scrum got his try so I thought the forwards there was no kind of drop like everyone came in and, and kind of did their job and I think that's nice to see the depth now even with so many players out so yeah hats off to the forwards yeah well uh, done and speaking about Connacht they seem to be clutching at straws a little bit John Porch lost his head at one stage mm -hmm. he, he hit Joey late got a yellow card Jack Carty then got a yellow card for hitting um, was it Hodnett in the air when he jumped into the air yep. um, I, there was obviously a question around that had he jumped into the tackle when, anyway he got a yellow card but it seems like they were kind of l reaching for the game what did you make of Connick's performance Louis? Yeah it's 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 quite difficult it, Connick's not yeah, they're, they're quite struggling at the moment they're not they're again just not there where they where they where friend would want them to be Andy friend so it's you can just like exactly like you said they, it just seems like they are reaching it's um they just not they just want to want to move up in the ladder as well but they're just not performing at the, the way that they want to mm. the, um you mentioned Andy friend there after the game he was interviewed and he seemed really deflated and he kind of mentioned that some lads just aren't putting their hands up making the same mistakes and that there's young fellas coming up behind that he looks like he's going to play them which I thought was a bit like putting the finger up to his starting team being like alright we're going to play the young fellas because you're not performing or do you think that's fair enough Lindsay to be saying stuff like that in a post-match interview probably wouldn't say it in a post-match to be honest because you know yourself from a team ethos you want that cohesiveness and to know that your coach has your back so that's all in-house stuff to me yeah. like you don't air, air your dirty laundry do you yes. know what I mean because I think Everything is so heightened, especially after a game. So you are emotional. So you, t you, I would take it badly. Do you know what I mean? Now I would react kind of a two fingers, like I'll, I'll show you. But that's not for everybody. Do you mm. know that way? So what would work for me mightn't work for Louis. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? Um, but personally, I think he just keeps his those emotional out, and it's not like him to be honest. You know, yeah. and you know, obviously he's going to step away at the end of the season. So you're kind of trying to keep it together, and you need that cohesiveness now more than ever. Um. And yeah, they did a couple of changes. People moved to the back row to second row. People moved to the bench. So again, we spoke about Connacht last year and the consistency. And again, they're going through that peaks and troughs, aren't they? Consist a couple of matches, then they kind of drop in performance. And then, you know, their confidence is hit again. So yeah, I don't know. I, I certainly wouldn't do it. And I think he just needed to keep it in-house. But yeah. we never know. Next week, they come out all guns blazing and it, and it worked for them. Well, that is the thing with Connacht. Like, that they could come in, out next week now and have a storm of a game, couldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. They've got some brilliant players. They mm -hmm. still have some really, really good, exciting players. And like I said, young guys coming through. But like, they're just not... It's 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 almost like England. Like, just just not there. You know, they, they've got some brilliant ta talent. But it's just not... Uh, just cohesiveness isn't there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and do, do you know what I noticed on the weekend as well? Your your mate Lindsay was Craig Casey was in some form, wasn't he? He was barking at the ref, barking at Jack O'Donoghue, giving out, yelling. It's like, I was like, down, Craig. No, I love it. Keep doing what you're doing, Craig Casey, because you know what? As a forward, that's what you want. You want your nine not barking and giving out to you, but you want your your half back line, like your half back parent, to give you those instructions, like to you know facilitate that game plan, that link between forwards and backs. Doesn't matter about conditions or anything. I thought. Yeah, he stood up. He took a leadership role. He was barking. He got a lovely try for for putting Calvin Ash through. And I just thought he was confident and full of beans. 
and I thought he was he was a cent- like he was central to to everything that Munster did well. And yeah, I said I'm a huge Craig Casey yeah, fan. Yeah, you couldn't um, ignore him in fairness. No, you couldn't, yeah. and like that's what you want from your nine. Mm. You know, you do want that from your nine. They are like no more than your ten. They're they're sassy, they're barky, they're moody, but yeah. you want them <laughs> giving you that instruction and directing you, and that's what forwards love. Because I mean, your head's down, you're trying to take on you know step forward, take everything up front on the gain line, bashing away. So you just want this voice of reason to direct you you know and and implement the game plan so yeah, yeah I thought you did great and hope, keep it up Craig and hopefully Munster can keep up that winning form as well but moving on to another Irish team that were playing on the weekend and Louis Ludic's team Ulster were playing and Ravenhill or Kingspan what do they Kingspan, call it up there yeah. now Kingspan <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kingspan 36-15 Ulster beat, beat Zebra up there what did you make of the game <laughs> yeah it was uh, I think Ulster, like they, they're doing really, really well. Um, there's, there's a lot of guys that that got a bit of opportunity as well. Um, Lukey playing inside centre, whilst um, James was outside centre. And James, like he's, he's finding his feet. He's getting there, f- just c- coming back from injury. So, but I thought Malls, as always, yeah, Ulster's mall was Atlanta. just phenomenal. Like that's that's a very um, obviously strong suit for them at mm-hmm. the moment. Um, but yeah. Tom, um, Tom Stewart. I thought he was he was just phenomenal. Yeah, like he's, the, uh, he's had a couple of opportunities now, a couple of man of the match. So he's just like whenever you see him, he doesn't seem like this explosive player, mm. but whenever he gets the ball, he breaks tackles. He's he's a phenomenal player. He gets around the park really well. So like it's looking good for Ireland. Like the the future, and especially in the in the hooker position, is yeah. looking very positive. So, but Ulster is 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 in in good form, I think. Yeah, for sure. Well, they got the bonus point win at home, which is massive, especially in those kind of conditions. And we had the big Ian Henderson back as well, yeah. controlling the line out. It's good to see him back, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. He's been so unfortunate with injuries, but like having him back, especially off the bench, is 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 brilliant. Um, but Zebra, like Zebra, at the moment they're not playing that well like they, they're quite struggling but like for Ulster getting a few guys um, a bit of an opportunity it's, it's been good it's good to see Jacob back as well mm. um, he's he's not the form where he probably wants to be but he, he's also he's getting there so but like for Ulster going into Champions Cup I think they'll be they'll have a lot of confidence they, they're playing some phenomenal rugby mm. they very good counter-attack strong up front it's, it's looking positive yeah, well, they're looking like they could challenge Leinster for the title. I don't know if Leinster can be caught, but they can definitely mm. challenge them because yeah. Ulster are sitting in second now with a game in hand. But Leinster are obviously unbelievable. We know that, Lindsay. You don't need to re- reinforce it. <laughs> but do you think? <laughs> do you think Ulster? Are you ca- being defensive there? <laughs> do you think Ulster can chase them down? Yeah, sure. They're playing each other this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. You know, this weekend coming, so it'll be an interesting battle. They come down to the to the RDS, and it's always a. A cracking game. I think we were lucky before, you know, at the start of the season when we went up and just got by the skin of our teeth in a very, very wet, miserable night. Yeah. Um, but look, it was great to see Ian Henderson back. You know, I think he was central again. Man of the match performance, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think he was absolutely awesome in the lineup. Like, he was unstoppable. And once they, again, they set up that mall like Zebra. I know they're poor opposition, but at the end of the day, um, you can only put out, you can only play what's in front of you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And there was so many great performances it was lovely to see James Humes back he was again central to a lot of the great things and I think the good thing about Ulster is depth I think they can mix their forward play and their back play and I think they're very exciting to watch and they've continued on from their great form from last season and obviously what's great for for Ulster is great for Ireland so yeah. it'd be an interesting battle this weekend they're second and I do think they can challenge Ulster I'd like to see them challenge Ulster um, it's always nice to freshen things up you know what I mean <laughs> but uh, obviously yes. I want Leinster to win all around them but it would be lovely to see a challenge and I think they can because physicality their speed of rook their talented players in their back line they've such you know they can just mix it up and do it all so I think if they can get the game plan right and really look at Leinster's Achilles heel I think yeah we could see an upset this I don't weekend think, uh, with Leinster um, I don't think there's much of Achilles heel because the thing is that if they, they if they play all the their stars, mm. their international players, or they play like backup or the players that play this weekend. It's like, it's always going to be tough over there, yeah. you know, and you know what's coming. It's these big forwards just running at you, getting over that vantage line, quick yeah. ball with brilliant backs. And doesn't matter if the stars are playing or not, you're going to get that. So, um, but the last couple of seasons also has definitely improved at the RDS. Like, I know a couple of years back when when I was still playing, we got pumped a couple of times and like also just moved on from there. And it's we always very, very competitive and Mm. like almost there. Mm. But 
like you said, you, you just don't know if we go, we'll be able yeah. to catch Leinster just yet. If I'm not mistaken, I think Ulster beat Leinster in the RDS last year, did they? When James Hume got a lovely try and he was celebrating like mad. I was it, it in the RDS or was it up in Ravenhill? We definitely lost them once last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's there. There's something that no, Ulster definitely. well able and to do like, The thing is, like if you've uh, Stuart McCloskey back and James mm. Hume, who had a fa fantastic partnership mm. last year, yeah. if we can get them motoring again, that, wouldn't that be a nice mm. battle with Henshaw and Ringrose if they were there? Mm. Or like Jamie Osborne played a full back, you know, like, you know, Leinster aren't afraid to move their players around and then he's mm. dinking balls over the top and you're like, all oh, right. Mm. And some of his passes there, you know, like so... Yes, they've creative players and I think that's the environment. You know, you have to commend Lens for the environment and the standard of players and they're not afraid to bring young fellas in, blood them yeah. and just let them make mistakes. And like, it was amazing to see so many changes the weekend and they still got the win. But um, yeah, I think if, I can't wait for a cracker, to be honest. You know, you do yeah. want that excitement and, you know, both teams just expressing themselves. And I thought Dwayne for Mielin had a very good game as well. But like the, the previous last couple of weeks, last year like he's been solid he's been good but I thought this game he was really phenomenal mm -hmm. maybe I think he's he's got a bit of extra motivation to just to break into that box team and going for the World Cup so I know he's been he got a I think he got a surgery over the <coughs> off season so that might have been bothering him and he's, he's getting back into form now so he's doing well but like you said Lindsay there's there's quite a lot of depth at Ulster there's they 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 I think Dan's been building this squad this last yep. last couple of seasons. So, like this is almost the the pinnacle points. So I think there's now if it's not this season, mm. I don't know when it's going to be. So there's they need to win some silverware at some stage. So like it's it's almost as good as it's going to get now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're building a lovely little squad up there. And you think that form will be brought into the Champions Cup because we that coming up soon. Ulster are way to sh sail sharks, and then they're bringing the current champions, La Rochelle, to Belfast. So how do you think they'll go in those fixtures? Yeah, I think at, at Sale, I would always put my money on, on Ulster. Like, we're always very competitive. Even away, we've got a very good record away, especially against the, the English teams. Like, we've done really well over there. So I definitely, even though I think Sale's second in the Premier, so they, mm -hmm. they're doing really, really well. They inform. But Ulster, like, with the, with the squad they've got, with... They, they inform I definitely think also will, will take that one La Rochelle <laughs> at home it's tough it's really tough they also second in the top 14 really inform mm -hmm. um, champions last year but once again also at home the very tough to beat so I would put my money still on, on Ulster at home yeah. going away to La Rochelle different story but at home like with that with that crowd and like a I cold have to, December as well a yeah. cold December yeah. yeah they've got some big forwards but also that 16th man with with Ulster Kingspan for a Zebra game that was sold out like that's yeah. very impressive like that is really really mm. good for for Ulster rugby but Champions Cup at home I think I think Ulster will take it Fairness to Ulster, they have a serious support system up there. They always turn out and they always come and watch their games. As you said, Zebra wouldn't wouldn't be the like mm. stars fixture, but they got a full stadium, so it'll definitely be full for these upcoming European games. So looking forward to seeing them. But the guys they're chasing down, Leinster, had another massive win on the weekend and they had all their academy fellas and quote-unquote second-string guys playing with a couple of other top lads littered in there but it was mostly like a young team and they still won 40 points to 5 against Glasgow Warriors like it's just unbelievable stuff Lindsay yeah and I don't think they had much of the ball looking at possession I think it was like 39-61 like but you know six tries to one um, as I said to you like Jamie Osborne played full back you know Carney was back I was really impressed with Ross Maloney so I hope he can continue on his rich vein of form like just taking to the game line and the pull back for like that second line of attack was excellent. He got in some some nice stuff. So they're just again their clarity around their play and their roles. It just it never drops, and I think that's absolutely testament to to Cullen and uh, Stuart Lancaster to to the production line basically that they have um, like taken like of players. And I said like I think not too long ago Jamie Osborne, if I'm not mistaken, is he's definitely Kildare man. Is it nice he plays with? And you know he's playing club and he's just in you know, being blooded and now he's like central again to Leinster and everything they do well. So um, another talent to watch for the future. Like I think now we're looking at Ireland and the conundrum we have of what players we, you know, I was even going over actually during the week last week about who we'd go to a World Cup and I hadn't even got Jacob Stockdale in. But like 
not for any other reason. I was like, where do you fit them? Because we have so many good players at the moment. So I think we've seen that again with Leinster, just the next crop that mm. are coming up. So well, I'm just so impressed by their conveyor belt of unbelievable players. Like It's like as if they're just robots. There you go. There's another unbelievable player. Just go out and he'll yeah. just yeah. hit his pass, hit his tackle, run his lines properly. It's just testament to the coaching. I'm, yeah, I'm unbelievable. It's it's just crazy. And like you said, they are so clinical. Yeah, it, so clinical. It's, it's, and like, that's why I said when Ulster comes here, it almost doesn't matter who's playing. You know you're going to get a top, top team. And f- from someone from the outside that... We don't, I don't know the, the players, the academy players so well as you do, but it just seems like this new face coming up and it's just like he can start any time, you know. Like it's unbelievable the amount of talent just coming through and like it's so, whatever they um, – what they're feeding these kids are <laughs> unbelievable and the, yeah. there must be something in the water because it's just unbelievable. And that's the, that's the system, I think, of, of Leinster Rugby and with the schools and with the academy and the coaching, there's something there that's just very special. Exactly. It's, if you compare that to, for example, the Sharks, I think the Sharks missed 10 players by injury or the box. But they got pumped by Cardiff, mm-hmm. um, was it 36-0? 36 36 yeah. Like, that's the difference when... Leinster could pick all their players if they really wanted to, but they said, listen, give these guys a, a go and they pump Glasgow, you know, so it's 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 just really phenomenal. Mm. It's, cr- it's crazy. You mentioned it there and I do think it highlights the unbelievable school system and club system that Leinster have set up. It's just years of them building these guys up. They start when they're like, what, 12, 13, just doing the basic skills, tackle tech, and they're coming out of school and they're ready to play URC. And they come on and they're guys that you could argue would start in any other province. But they just happen to all just be sitting in UCD training away and just unbelievable players. Yeah. Like, for instance, Chris Cosgrove came mm. on, unbelievable, stepped about 17 players. His footwork was light then, wasn't it? Unbelievable. I had in the, played with him in the sevens team for a while and yeah. his footwork is incredible. But he's even fi- more finely tuned since he's been in with the Leinster senior team for a while. He's just not making any mistakes. The same with Rob Russell, got three tries in the weekend, just casually getting three tries. Like it's just He's probably top of the try list because that's not, is that his second hat trick this season? He definitely was on the score sheet. Um, oh, I think he got two tries a couple of weeks ago, maybe against Connacht. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was against Connacht, I think, up in the sports ground. Well, it could be. He's getting loads of tries and obviously it's just, he has to be at, on the end of them. But then again, that's his job, be at the end of the tries. You know, Louis, what it's like as a back three. Like So you got to be in the right positions. He's playing unbelievably. Probably wouldn't start in a Leinster starting 15 though, would he, if everyone was fit? Probably not, but still, like, and we said earlier, if we don't know where these guys, they, they probably don't want to leave, you know, like mm. even though there's so many players, they, they know they're probably not going to play Champions Cup, maybe if there's a injury or two, but like, but I think they just want to be involved and they, they're learning so much. We Imagine the training, like how competitive the training must be because that's like with professional sports, it's really good to be competitive in training. The guys, the second string guys, they want to move up. So it's very competitive. It's, it's really tough training. But imagine at Leinster, like it's just that level up. No it's, days off in Leinster. No, there right? there yeah. must be a couple of punch-ups as well because yeah. I can just imagine these young guys just want to push into this squad. And like hopefully they'll filter a bit. There's a couple of these guys going to, to Ulster or a Munster or just to just to, to get some game time. But mm. like I think they just want to hold on to because it's special, you know, like winning so many championships and leagues. You want to be involved in that that culture. I think you just learn so much. So it's no, it's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Well, you could even see it. They they rolled out the 2011 and 2012 winners of the Champions Cup at halftime. Did yeah. all the old heads and Joe Smith was there as well. So you can just see they have just a rich history in Leinster of just winning. And I presume none of these lads want to leave. For example, Roland Kelleher just came back. He's back in action. Great to see him playing again. But. Mm. Who's going to get the jerseys now? Him or Dan Sheehan? Two unbelievable hookers. Like, what do you do there? <laughs> it's so difficult. It's it's a yeah. great problem to have. Um, it's really it's it's a, uh, amazing. Andy must be thinking it must be difficult, but like it's just brilliant. And like it it probably can be a, a, a coin flip at this moment in time. But like Keller is just some talent. Like he is mm. he's phenomenal. So. I think he'll he, he might start, but you just don't know. And it all it all depends. Probably what's nice is whenever you have so many good players, you can look at the opposition yep. and you can say tactically this guy will suit this game better. So it's an easier conversation to have. It's not you first choice, you second choice. It's for this game. Let's start. Mm. Keller or whoever, he's he's perfect for this role. We want to play this way, and that just makes a coach's job so much yep. easier. 
Yeah, what do you make of it, Lindsay? No, you took the words out of my mouth. It's, it's nice to see that it's now not about the talented player or who's... Um, it's about the opposition and I think that'll be essential and key going into a World Cup for us uh, just to be able to manoeuvre players pick different players for different roles because um, like out in the loose Dan Sheen is like he's like having another back row mm-hmm. but then like uh, Keller is probably a little bit more clinical in his set piece so again if you've kind of you just need that meticulous line out or even in the scrum not to be as vulnerable I think right now you know, it's nice to be able to have those, you know, those arguments in your head, but also that choice that you can just move them around and give players a rest. And you're not worried then about injuries. But yeah, probably to me to lose out in the World Cup squad now, poor Dave Heffernan's pushed out and Ronan Keller just comes back in, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like we talked about Tom Stewart, we talked yeah. about Dermot Barron, like there's so many fabulous hookers that are, you know, there or thereabouts around in the next 10 months that could, you know, cause a shock. But right now, mm-hmm. I think the two Leinster boys are the two front runners. Yeah, for sure. Great to see Ronan Keller back and hopefully he stays fit because we love seeing him play but before we move on to talk about the other games there were some internationals on the weekend our very own Jason Hennessy was chatting to Ron Nogara um, we were just chatting to Ronan on the launch of the Benetti Windsor seasonal launch but uh, he was talking about the Munster rugby uh, scenario as well he was talking about the Autumn Nations and Ireland's performances the Barbarians win that he coached and also this thing about him maybe working for England rugby so take a look at this start off with the, the Autumn Nations obviously Ronan um Three wins from three for Ireland, including one over the world champions. I mean, uh, how do you reflect on that? What do you think? You're happy with, with, with everything? Yeah, it's it's obviously... Uh, Women becomes a habit, obviously, and they were um, three, I suppose, broadly different games and the fact that uh, South Africa was always going to be an extremely difficult game considering the team they picked and... Uh, I suppose the way their results have been going, so that was all about getting results. And Fiji was an opportunity for fringe players. I would say a lot of people, and not a lot of people, but certain players would be disappointed that they didn't probably make their case stronger uh, in that shop window. And the Australia game, considering what happened um, in the Italian game, um, um. There was always going to be a backlash from from that because only for Damien Pinot, uh, Australia would have had the result against against France, a sensational upset inside the France. So uh, the margins are tiny. It's amazing at Test rugby when it comes down to one or two little things around uh, discipline or taking your chances. Like the chance for Pinot wasn't a chance. It was just another example of an extraordinary player making. It was something out of nothing, and uh, without him, I don't think they looked like scoring that 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 final winner. Um, so um, the Australian game, or you know, in Australia, I think um, with Laurie Fisher, they made a big play going after Ireland's breakdown. They were good there, slowing down the ball, good conditions, it was low scoring game, defenses on top, and. Um, you know, rather probably strangely, Australia had kind of like in tennis parlance a match point, and the scrum half gets ahead of the of the of the uh, ball on, on a on a set drive, which will infuriate the forwards, coach infuriate the forwards, and releases a penalty um, to Ireland, and then Ireland kick it out, and they uh, lose the line out, and give another opportunity to Australia, which they weren't able to um, to um, com- to commit to to get to get them over the line. So uh, low scoring games, uh, one score games in two home games um, against quality opposition. Most important thing is Ireland are winning. But what is good from their point of view is that they can't under any circumstances get get carried away because they know that the margins are tiny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, a big thing, I suppose, from the, the whole series was Jack Crowley. You know, he ended up playing a lot more minutes against Fiji than he expected with Joey going off that injury. And then to find out you're starting your first test against Ireland, full of, full house in the Viva with, what, five, ten minutes to go. I mean, what do you think of him? How has he impressed you? And is it true that you did try to bring him to La Rochelle uh, a year or two back? Yeah, I, I kind of was... I. I... 
have a very good relationship with Donald Lennon, so uh, Donald has a very good eye for for for, for players, and uh, he probably understands that when I'm home, that I I can't meet everybody, so he carefully selects people. And Jack was always one that he had identified from a long number of years ago, and um, so I remember having coffee with him and just picking his brain, and he gets the game really well, and he understands that I think what's involved and. In, managing a team around the pitch and game management, which is crucial because a lot of old halves nowadays, I think, underestimate how pleased forwards are when the ball is in front of them. So you have to uh, keep your front five happy and then also you have to keep your outside backs happy. So that's what good tens do. They they understand when they pull the trigger with, with uh, missed passes, but they also understand that they want to keep the ball in front of the forwards. Uh, so, you know, I think anyone... Uh, who's listening to me will understand that Jack's basics were, were very good. I think he was always, I suppose, craving an opportunity to, to play. Luckily for me, when I was I mean, uh, starting with, uh, with Munster, I was able to make mistakes in big games and still get picked the next week. And But now it's got so competitive, it's very hard for young players to, to have that, I suppose, opportunity to success or in succession uh, mess up and that's what makes players better you know so you need an understanding coach in that regard I think that's why he's in great hands at Mike Prendergast I think he will really fine tune him and and grow his game and um, you mean what Munster need is they need is they're lucky in the fact that they've got three excellent number 10s and they'll all get their opportunity it's just a case of being ready to do that because uh, their skill sets are are quite quite different. But like, you mean Joey can play anywhere in the back line, really? And but he's a um, in a test match, he's a very interesting guy to spring off the bench as well. Jack Crowley looks mm-hmm. probably more a strategist in the fact that he could probably start the game for you, and, and Ben Healy would be the would be the same. So a lot of decisions there for for, for the Munster management, but. What's crucial for them is that they're they're in form, their confidence are high, and they, you need to you mean uh, get the best out of all of them. With that, there's going to be disappointments. People just have to accept that you know if the three into one doesn't go, but what the reality is three into two, it's either fifty thirty or sixty yeah. twenty. But then the following week it might be a different combination. Uh, but what you want to be doing there when you're the coach is that whoever is in the saddle, that he's bringing something quite special to the team. Because if your 10 is humming, the team is usually humming as well. Yeah, yeah. Just on that, it was interesting what you said there. Like, like you, you were given an opportunity to make mistakes when you're younger. If you look at the Munster team at the moment, like, like from a results perspective, and I know it is a results game, it hasn't been great. But this season, they really are playing the young guys, the likes of a dog boy who's 19, the likes of Rua Quinn, who was only playing senior cup last year. He's coming in at 18 years of age. You know, there's a lot of young guys playing. He's giving them a chance. They might not win anything this year. They're going to be maybe afforded to make mistakes. But isn't that what we want to see for Munster? Because it took you guys a long time to get to that level. But you played, you came in at a young age, and you were given that three or four years to get to the top. Yeah, you make a great point. Exactly. You have to have a plan, you know, and we might not be... Uh, or fair with the plan, you know, because the plan has to be at times quite secretive and and quite um, what's the it needs to be uh, there's lots of layers to it because you're dealing yes. with quality players, but like the windows to get the best out of them um, are are small at certain stages as well. And as you said there, you look at like need to back the players and invest in them and as you say like it's staggering to think that some of the guys are just one year out of school rugby in the back row isn't they playing playing against the big boys you know and that's yeah. that's hard to really believe because at that late age it's there's a big difference in physical development um but you could see that the core of um the monster team or the our monster team that I've seen are uh, you can see that this current management have most definitely a plan for selecting who they see will be 
taking this team forward and not necessarily what's best for now, but what may be best for 12 months, 18 months, 24, because the coaching uh, group is uh, very intelligent and have a good eye for that. And I think uh, certainly from Mike's point of view, he'd be very good at nurturing that. And Dennis then up front would be very, very good in shaping them into, into hard, hard men. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, we're doing a piece with yourselves. With Pat was over there earlier on in the year. Like we're doing a season with La Rochelle, and we've been interviewing all your players regularly. And uh, I see, like you've met it with some of your new signings, so like so Danan and them. Besides, the, besides when you're looking for a player, right? Besides, like his skill set. What do you look for as a head coach in terms of a player, in terms of his character? Because there's a lot of good players out there, but you know, it's another side of it. Yeah, it is exactly. That's. For me, that's huge in recruitment. You go after the person first and then you can shape the player you want to be. But, you know, I think uh, personality is huge. Willingness to learn, to get better, appetite for work, growth mindset. Uh, so many things like that really do matter. And that's why Ulti, I think, is so popular over here. He's very uh, humble and very uh, willing to, to work learn, get better, but also uh, we've identified he's a competitor, we've identified he can be uh, very effective on a rugby pitch, but what's important too is we've felt that he could really fit into the group and add to the group because we essentially spend more time off the pitch than we do on the pitch together, so that kind of harmony off the pitch is very important as well. Yeah, I've noticed that even the videos, like they're, they're, it just seems like everyone's enjoying their rugby over there. They're all having fun. Yeah, it's you know, like, long, it's seasons, a great one. long, long season. It's very different to test rugby. It's long season. We don't need as much detail as the test game because test games usually are decided by detail. We need team spirit from people all, from all different backgrounds and walk of lives all around the world. And we're, we're together a lot, and it's a hard grind, and it's a marathon, and you lose form, you gain form. But think what we are good at here is that we probably have consistent behaviours as as best we can, which means that, yeah, we've had a few no-shows this year, that's for certain, but we also have had some some good performances. So there's a there's a good, I think, willingness to work for the guy next to you over here, which is important. Yeah, yeah. I have to ask you just on the test thing. Obviously, you were all, all over the headlines last week, but... Quote saying that, like, if the England job came along, it's something you would entertain. Um, but like, just I, I'd love to ask, like, I've always seen you as, like, I know a career wise, it would make fantastic sense, but I've always seen you as a proud Irishman. Would you really take the England job? Would you really consider it if it was on the table? Yeah, of course, I would, yeah, because I think they're a team that can win a world cup, you know, and it's very different when you play it to when you're coaching. I think it's hard to explain to guys that are still playing or are young supporters but when you get into coaching and you kind of have responsibility for the for the whole group or uh, the whole environment it's a very exciting role to have and serious players in England there's a strength and depth there there's a structure there that's very well organized so in terms of a sporting point of view there's a lot there I obviously uh, over the next number of weeks have to give that the depth of thought necessary for obviously weighing it up is one thing uh, mm. you know what I mean and I'm only on a short list obviously but to actually placing yourself mentally and physically in that role there's there's a lot involved in that and it's something that um, I'm fully aware of because it's the exact same as any player or coach who signs a contract signing a contract is quite easy but positioning yourself in in the training ground, or in in a in the England in England tracksuit, that that's that's what you have to think about. So you know, I think you have to weigh up too. Uh, I was extremely fortunate and grateful to win a European Cup in my first year as head coach here. There's so many good things in this club that have just started that I've always said that. Why would you walk away from that? So there's a lot of yeah. a lot of not issues in my head, but decisions to be made. But they're 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 great decisions to to have. And um, what is also important to say would be it would be 
I would be a part of a decision, but it'd be a family decision. Unless my wife and kids were happy, I I wouldn't sign it. Yeah, in any club sense, or yeah. in any country, it just doesn't work, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Look, I know you're in a rush, so I'll just ask you one more. Um, I have to ask you about the, the Barbarians week. I mean, you got to link back up with Scott Robinson. What? I don't think you were never involved as a player at Barbarians, were you? you didn't no, get a chance. I never played. Yeah. So, what was it like to be? Is it as is it as fun as it is mad and is it as good crack as everyone says it is like? Yeah, it is because it's just a release from the from the grind of top fourteen. I mean, game after game after game, kind of you get caught sometimes and eaten up and your own self importance of chasing four points every week. Then you go to to London, great hotel, great restaurants, good food, plenty of of beer and uh, sing songs. People you've never met before. You just everything good about the game of rugby comes around Baba's and it was a such a reinvigorating week. Scott Robertson is a an infectiously positive person and uh it was great. Obviously I've been in contact with him over the phone, but to, to meet him in real life, discuss rugby, uh discuss his family, discuss his opportunities, discuss what we're gonna do this week, then implement it, then having a laugh doing it. It's with with a kind of a lot of La Rochelle boys, a lot of players that I coach in wrestling, a lot of guys that I didn't know. It made it all pretty special. Yeah. Do you reckon you t- we'll see Scott over here at some stage? He's done it all now with the Crusaders. Do you reckon? It- yeah, it says is, is is behind him. I would say he'd love to coach New Zealand. I think he's obviously uh, a front runner for the England job. Um, but he'd excel in, in whatever one he'd like to do, is for certain. Very interesting to see what Raj had to say about the England job there. What do you think, Louis? Will he take it <laughs> um, if he's offered it? Yeah, it? if he's offered it. Um, as an outsider, I know like it's not. Um, it won't be ideal, but it, it's very difficult because at the moment, and Andy Farrell's not going anywhere. So for for someone like Raj, like he that he wants an international job. Like he's an unbelievable coach. Mm-hmm. He's proved himself, and being an outsider, like it's it's. He'll do a phenomenal job with them. It's one of probably one of the the top jobs to get in mm. world rugby. So, uh, he, I think if he gets it offered, it like he, he has to take it. He has to, it would be a great opportunity, and you never know after that moving into Ireland. Whenever um, after you guys won a World Cup, maybe it's maybe yeah, going into it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for Raj, I think it's it's a really good opportunity. But like there's there's a lot of other competition, like Scott Robinson. Um, he's also on the t- short list. So like you heard a, that he's not with Crusaders anymore, did you? Yeah, the the end of the season, he's he's not with Crusaders. So that's very very interesting. Mm. He like he is some coach. He's mm. he's won how many Super Rugby titles with the Crusaders? Like he's just phenomenal. And I think Raj has spent a bit of time there, and he, I think he's learned quite a lot, obviously. So, but Scott is is some. He's got some records. So, yeah. like at, at the moment between those two, it, it can be anyone. Yeah, based off. Kind of road Roger's tone there. It seems like he's happy enough to take the job. How do you think we'll go down, Lindsay, if he does? Yeah, he was just alluding to the fact that he's just shortlisted for now. But if the you know if it came on the table as a realistic option, obviously he has to speak to his wife and kids. You know he's yeah, he added that in at the end. There, he didn't did he? add that Smart in. To make man. Sure to listen, he is, he is <laughs> man. You know <laughs> he's uh, yeah he he knows how to play his cards right. So yeah. uh, fair play to Raj getting that in. Um, <laughs> but no, he said obviously like it's one of the top jobs in the world. They're so organised. There's so much money. There's so much depth of talent. So you know it's such a dream job and it's very different from a player to. A, a coach I obviously am still very emotional going like please don't take it <laughs> um, but obviously at the same time because it'd be Ireland's lost you know he's you know he's you know proven himself as Crusaders um, under Scott Robertson he's now you know his first season at La Rochelle as head coach now and he, he's obviously won a Champions Cup so I mean he, there's big things to come from this man we'd mm. rather it with Ireland but obviously you can't really say no when England come a knocking but 
I suppose it'll be timing for him again. A family, you know, does he uproot? He's, you know, he is really enjoying. He's at that, you know, La Rochelle and his time there. So, you don't you want it to be the right move and enjoy it for the right reasons. You know, you want to go into that England job and not only for yourself but for for that country. And I tell you what, after their performance at the weekend, which we'll cover, uh, yeah. you know, they could do with a change. You know, with someone, um, I think just to revamp them really and get them back up to where they. They feel they should be. Yeah, as a career move, it makes complete sense. I could Absolutely. see why he would do it. Mm. But in the interview with Jason, he mentioned that he put on an England tracksuit and I, my skin crawled <laughs> at the idea of him wearing a red rose. Honestly, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so hopefully he can take the job if he does and just not wear the English rose. Yeah, I think maybe we could come to some compromise, you know, in his contract. <laughs> Never wears the jersey no. or the kit. Oh, that's the only way we would allow <laughs> yeah. it. it sp speaking of the England uh, team, obviously Eddie Jones, his job is probably in question at the moment because they lost again on the weekend 27-13 to the world champions to the Sappers and we have one here in the studio did you watch the game? Yeah yeah no, I watched the game it was um, was a really good game um, obviously I'm very delighted um, yeah. the, the box played really well um, I think coming from Losing against Ireland, it was a completely different game. I thought um, someone like Damien Willems, um, mm. much, much better game. Um, we controlled the game better. But what I like about S South Africa at the moment, we're just not kicking the ball away. We're looking very structured. Um, Counter-attack, we'll talk about that try, was phenomenal. Awesome but that kick, mm -hmm. like that's what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, is England's just that a little bit off like that yeah. kick should be co uh, uh, comp uh, be able to compete in the air but it's just too long Damien Willems are beating the first guy and setting the try the world didn't he and that's where we see him at his best when he's that playmaker yeah do you know and he's used to obviously playing a full back and we he just like he oozed everything he did well you know it was nice to see him in confidence and he was central to that try yeah no, it's, it's really good to see because I think he's got a lot of criticism mm -hmm. of the last couple of um, couple, couple of games and in France it was so close against the French the box played really well last week but like this game was really good like it was a really solid performance from South Africa even though England is struggling like they they tried really hard but yeah. like the box was just too too strong they were and the box also dealt with a red card so they played with only 14 men for 20 minutes and beat England in Twickenham so the box did well great for them to go home now with that win at Christmas and they won't be lambasted by their supporters they might be having <laughs> quite enough Christmas but good to see Willems as well I can see now what probably Razzie and Jacques Niemba are looking at okay he could play 10 because he had a great game mm. and as you alluded to there when he played against Ireland he wasn't really great France he kind of was pulling it together but he played really well at 10 so I could see him taking that role and that Arensa try. Am I pronouncing it right? Arensa? Um, Arensa. Arensa. I played against him with the seventh team. The lad is lightning, man. Yeah. And he made Marcus Smith look like a prop forward. <laughs> the first time I saw him, I thought, like, I got confused between Colby and him. They look so similar. They're so light yeah, looking as well. Yeah, and it almost, it almost felt this. I thought he was going to step inside for a second. It was almost like the final, you know, mm. when, um, when Colby stepped inside of Farrell. It almost looked the same, but he went on the outside. Mm. And... I felt so bad for, for for Smith, like he, but he is so lighting. That's one of the last guys you want to um, have one on one and with so much space. But that inside out was just, yeah, it was just oh, phenomenal. It was textbook, like, yeah, it was, it was, textbook, he was moving like yeah. a gazelle, and it was very similar to Colby. I actually, mm. same as you, I thought it was Colby. Then I realised mm. he wasn't playing the game at all. And Marcus Smith is no slouch. Marcus yeah. Smith does that to people. But our, our answer, these South African lads, they're just built different. Like, they're just yeah. so fast. Yeah. What is it that you do down there, man? <laughs> no, it's Tell us your secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, um, I will show us if you share what Leinster's doing. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's speak after the show. <laughs> um, but, Swap yeah, notes. no, it's, it's just phenomenal, these. And, you know, a couple of years ago, a lot of these smaller guys, they would not get picked mm. because of their size. But rugby's been... in. It, has been evolving so much and it's great to see the smaller guys getting so much recognition you mm -hmm. know so it's it's really really good and I think there's a lot of these guys like Corby breaking that barrier and breaking the the glass ceiling of it doesn't matter what size you are like if you if you're strong if you're quick like you can be an international superstar you know so mm -hmm. it's it's just great but Oren so I'm I'm delighted for him and there's a, there's a couple of young Wings coming through in South Africa, which is just phenomenal. It's yeah. it's good for South African rugby. I think he has six tries in six games or something like that. So he's going well. He's going really he's well, going and right. it's going to be interesting from a South African point of view because my Pimpi lost previous World Cup, mm. like winning and um, scoring that try in the in the final. He's 
he was phenomenal. But now with with Colby with Orensa, it's going to be interesting to see who who they're going to Jockney Nob is going to pick for that for that eleven jersey. So yeah. it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Because it's not with the backs, at least with the forwards. When you have the bomb squad, you're, you're obviously going naturally two position, you know, two players for each position in the front row. Mm. You don't really have it. In the, you're, you're really reduce the numbers for your back three, you know, and mm. so. And um, especially Valilla Roos had a really good season. He I did thought, another great game the weekend, yeah, actually. Really, really good game, and it seems like his his game has evolved mm. a lot. He's he's very involved in playmaking. He's he he's brings a lot. Always talking, chatting. Yeah. He's he's bringing yeah. a lot of energy, and I think maybe. He'll probably come off the bench with Willems on 15, but he's bringing that energy and he's, I thought he's had a really, really good season. So I'm, I'm delighted for he him. He seems to really be in that leadership role mm. at the back there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And his decision making, like mm. even like just his passing and on the gain line and just yeah, always calm, always mm. calm amongst some of the chaos at times. And yeah. I think that will be central to those young players you've just alluded to coming up and um, just that leadership with his decision making, his calm head and yeah, constantly chatting and reassurance. So I think yeah. he's going to be central no matter whether he starts or comes off the bench, I think he'd be central to how yeah. successful mm. South Africa will be Good in the next South Africa. Months. They're pulling it together now to go back home over Christmas. So again, now they're going to be another thing to worry about next year with the World Cup. But was a fact to Clerk who when someone was alluding to the fact that they, they're not really worried about Ireland or England now. It's, you know, you know, they're they're back up and running and we're not no, really challenged. Said. Yeah, I definitely saw that during the week or over the last couple of days where like, now we're not really worried about, you know, Ireland or, you know, coming up to a World Cup like because... Oh, wow. um, yeah. That's the thing I think about Razzie and Jacques Niebuhr is they have these long-term plans and mm. this is probably all part of it. Do you know what I mean? This is just building in. Or am I right saying that? That they're going to be ready to go by the World Cup comes around? Yeah, no, they've got they've got a plan. They, like, especially with international rugby, mm. there's, there's these blocks and you can definitely plan ahead. And especially with someone like Rossi, with the success they've had with the World Cup, they, they, don't, have, they don't have these worries as England and like Eddie Jones. You mm. know, there's a lot of, with Wales as well, like they can plan ahead, they know what they are doing, and they've got a they've got a proper plan in place, and no, it's, it will make a big difference. Yeah, watch this space. But you mentioned there Eddie Jones and his precarious position with the head coach job in England. Bill Sweeney came out after an RFU review panel, and CEO Bill Sweeney is the CEO of the RFU, and he said, "We would like to thank England fans for their patience and support. It matters to us how they feel. Like them, we are really disappointed with the results of the Autumn Nation series. Despite strong individual performances and some great new talent coming into the team, the overall results are not where we expect them to be. So that seems like a straight just you're out, you're out of here, Eddie Jones. What you think, Lindsay? No, I, like you're saying about like Razzie and South Africa having a plan. I was thinking that my same sis. I was like." If this were not in the same situation we were um, for 2019 in that World Cup, because um, England were in the same position, probably going into that, and then they're in the final against South Africa. So I'm like, I think England also have a plan. They're like, yeah, we're just going to go under the radar here now for the next ten months. And yeah. like the the gas thing is like, right, everything has gotten really competitive. But the autumn series are about blood and new players, and you know, taking the time that if you don't have the performance, you're not under pressure for the results. So I know the thing about England is, you know, obviously it's the home of of rugby and the birth of rugby and as a sport and as a nation they're so proud but at the same time you just have to take windows of opportunity to just blood new players try new competitions it doesn't always work out but at the same time I think England will be there or thereabouts in 10 months I think this is just again grand they're booed they have certain standards but I don't see that being the same team or same forms as we're going to see now in the World how, Cup how France. mad is it you said it there Lindsay they got booed off the pitch at the end didn't they yeah, they got booed off. They were tw- what was it twenty seven six after nearly sixty minutes. So obviously the red card was a huge effect on the game for South Africa and their performance. But at the same time, it's it's more so. And I think in the first half, I think they spent like twenty odd seconds in the in six in, seconds in the South Africa twenty two. Yes, by the end of the and first you half. can't be in what we call like what rugby players know as the green zone. Like if you only you get very few opportunities to be in the green zone, which is twenty two in which is your chance to score against your opposition. And if you're not in there, you can't score. And if you're <laughs> in there and not using the ball well, you can't score. So, I mean, you have to get in the opposition's 22. Yeah. You're not going to win a game of rugby otherwise. So they're all fixable things. You know, they're yeah. all fixable. And I'm not going to be hoodwinked by the fact that England and Eddie Jones, and Eddie Jones is an actor in himself. He yeah, plays a true. game. Come on now. Yeah. Well, I see you coming. He Don't be giving me that. He was Razzie before <laughs> social media, you see. Yeah. Eddie Jones. Yeah, he'd he always is be doing the Razzie. Media, yeah, so. he is yeah. the Razzie before Razzie decided to get on Twitter. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the thing. Um, yeah. No, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I think it's all a facade. I think it's all distraction. And I think it's good because 
because my only worry is that Ireland have peaked too soon and how are we going to manage the next kind of eight test match that is my worry as well it is my worry there's it can only go down from here like yeah we're know? sitting up there looking down everyone else having a Guinness <laughs> we're, not yeah, usually, <laughs> we're not usually good in that position we're going to be in the underdogs now everyone's chasing us to target on our back yeah. which is nice but it's like oh no South Africa pulled their shit together yeah and you yeah. don't want to be the team to face South Africa after beating them in yeah. Dublin you know because they're you know they're an animal that are in you know they're yeah. They're in the Louis bush nearly there. hit you this morning, sure, coming in the door, didn't he? <laughs> Listen, I saw his face and I had a big smile. Yeah. He's there going to tackle me. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. We're speaking of uh, South African and social media and all that. So Razzie and World Rugby met and they they hugged and kissed up and the whole lot. And uh, I think what's happened is they've agreed to make a new protocol when it comes to coaches and refs analysing each other is what I took from it. Would I be right in saying that, Jason? Essentially, yeah. So they're having a chat like they're... They still need to meet more further, but they're, they're getting there. Okay, yeah. So Razzie's getting his way, is what he's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, mediation that's a victory now. for Razzie, yeah. yeah. Well he, done. The just man, stay off Twitter. The man does what he wants, and I back it completely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on now to another game that happened <clears> the weekend was Australia versus Wales in the Principality Stadium. Australia fought back after being 21 points down to win 39 34. Did you catch it, Lindsay? I did. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think we needed to see something from Australia, and we did. And actually, Wales played really well. And Al- 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 Alwyn Jones was under, you know, a lot of fire, you know, called out by the Beast a couple of weeks ago. You need to retire. But I thought he was central to a really good performance. Um, and I thought Wales played well. And then it just, yeah, uh, Australia just came out of nowhere and went, just took the game. So I think it was nice for them to finish the way they did after a kind of up and down kind of series. Um, Wales will not be happy to no. give away. You can't at international level give away a 21 point lead. Sorry. <laughs> but I think yeah, I thought it was Wales' best performance in a long, long mm. time. The The speed of ball they had was phenomenal. I don't know what it is. It would be nice to see what, especially that first half. That's why they were so far ahead. They played incredibly well. I thought Gareth Anscombe was He was a sublime, amazing. wasn't he? Amazing. But like, he went off injured, no? He, he got yeah. injured. I think his shoulder. shoulder. It looked like a shoulder. So, like, he was slotting penalties and conversions all over the place. So, <clears throat> I thought he was really phenomenal. Mm. Alan Jones. Wasn't like, he? He, he was, was He was offloading and he was pivotal. Like He's he making was, clean breaks and stuff. Yeah, a couple really. of clean breaks. He yeah. was, I thought it was, was his best game in a long time. He yeah. was, he it was, was two was, fingers to those who question him, I think. <laughs> two <laughs> yeah. fingers to the beast on yeah. the cameras that he did. What yeah. better way to answer your critics? Well? Yeah. And, um, and Jack Morgan. Yes. Goodness. He was, he was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Like he was just breaking tackles left, right and centre. Like a man possessed. Wasn't yeah, he? he was just incredible but it almost seemed like when Elwyn Jones um, went off when Gareth Anscombe mm-hmm. got injured that's when the the tide turned a little bit and Australia was like with the amount of talent they've got they just they were Built counting some confidence, yeah, weren't they? yeah and the, it's it's a lot of times easier you know yourself whenever you're behind the pressure's almost off mm. and you can just play a little bit of ball and that's when they're at the most dangerous and they scored a couple of good tries and they, they they clawed the sound back so it was very impressive it was and it was a mad game there was a plethora of yellow cards both sides were down to 13 men at one stage Australia then fought back fought, uh, with the uh, Nawa Kwanita Wasa two tries did well I get that well right? Done. Yeah. well done <laughs> some <laughs> surname <laughs> some surname but he's some player as well oh, he is a powerful, beast isn't of a man. he is so powerful yeah mm. he's phenomenal like he just broke into the scene this season and he's like it, um, a couple of weeks ago someone said he played but like club rugby and like he had I don't know if he played super rugby or played in the, and he just straight into the Australian team and it seems like he just belongs mm. like he's just he some athlete you, you saw him did you see him oh, we were seven rows from the front when we went to see Arden Australia yeah. t- uh, last weekend and now I mean like he turned and I was like oh my god he's actually taking up a quarter to pitch with your shoulders and back I was like you are he is a huge man yeah, he's and an he's athlete. a winger. I was like, I'd hate yeah. that fella to be running at you. And I think that's where it kicked in. Like Australia, now their discipline has been a consistent. Yeah. That's their only consistency now it is their indiscipline now for um, the last number of weeks. Like it's not the first time they've been down to 30 men with yellow cards. Um, but they were, when their athleticism kind of broke through and they got that bit of confidence, they were far superior. Yeah, yeah they, they really were, were. Yeah, it was unbelievable. To, unbelievable for them to get a win going back to Australia as well because yeah. they didn't play too well against Ireland and their other fixtures in the Automation Series. Obviously, it's bad for Wales, but I'm happy enough for Australia because they're a tier one nation as well. Um, but is Wayne Pivak's career in jeopardy, do you think, Lindsay? 
I don't know. They've been inconsistent. Obviously, they lost to Georgia. Then they have a great first, you know, what, 60 minutes against, you know, um, Australia, which will, you know, will be one of the top dogs going into a World Cup. So, yeah, I don't know. They have been inconsistent probably over the last, what, year, 18 months. So mm. I'm not sure if they're going to do it. They have to in the last couple of weeks to give them time to for a new coach to but to bled, blood in but also when it's very hard to fill the shoes of Warren Gatlin when you he's involved in such a successful period of Welsh rugby I mean no one really was going to come up to that for a long time so and there's talk of Warren Gatlin coming back in now to save him before yes. Six Nations in the World Cup do you think that could happen Louis? Yeah it's difficult just before the World Cup mm-hmm. it's really tough there's not a lot of time at least there's <coughs> the Six Nations for them to to work on a few things maybe Gatlin can come in and, and support consultancy and in the background. consult a little yeah. bit because you saw like what happened it's maybe not as much as New Zealand at a, before whenever they made those changes with the assistant coaches and you could see the tr- transformation whenever Joe Schmidt went in and, yeah. and the impact he had maybe if Gatton comes in and, and just a bit of fresh points of view and just maybe change up a few things because they again they've got some brilliant players um, you could see what they could do that first 60 minutes mm-hmm. um, the weekend again in Australia they were phenomenal so that's the way they can play yeah um, in an Australian point of view, they're missing a lot of players as well. They've got so many teams injured. So I think for them, after this autumn, especially winning um, against Wales, it, it'd be very positive. But they they will see as a like just get over this this autumn series just to get a few players back and prepare for for the World Cup. Yeah, but Wales definitely need to do something. And I think it would be smart for him to get Gatlin in because he knows what he's doing and even yeah, cons- but consultancy role. I think so. I yeah. think something to set in the ship because I think it would be, I think it'd be more drama than Wales need, you know, and they, they have been in the last, you know, their club scene hasn't been well, you know, grassroots, even, you know, in their provinces, nothing has been coming up. So below the international, you know, they, they've, They've had a lot. They've been drama ridden to be to be riddled to be honest. Um, so I think now just bring Warren in in the background, just settle the ship a bit more guidance, fresh voice, and just settle and bring that consistency because I think in the core of it they have some really really good players coming up. Yeah, hundred percent. But so the other URC results from the weekend, we'll just round them up very quickly. Stormers got a win against Scarlets at home, thirty six nineteen. Benetton actually beat Edinburgh. Edinburgh really struggle away at Benetton, don't oh, they? Stop, they lost yeah. again, twenty four seventeen. Bulls smashed the Ospreys 43-26. Bulls were at home. The Lions got a win as well, 33-5. Well done to South African clubs, except for the Sharks, who lost 35-0 at home to Cardiff. Louis, what's the story there, man? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the difference when we said Leinster, like with the with amount of depth, like they've got 10, I think 10 guys out and they, they just lost the plot. They're just struggling and they've got good players. Like there's a couple of really, um, there's Ruan van Rensburg who came back. Like this, they've got really, really good players. So I don't understand. It's it, it Apparently it was a, as a wet and windy um, night in, in, in Durban, but still like, and you would think at least it would be competitive. It'd be very close. But they'll be um, Stephen Everett will be um, Sean Everett w- won't be happy at all. I think they also made a statement and just apologising because it's it's just not it's just not right. You know, it's mm-hmm. for them to be such a good club, such a good province. It's it's just not good enough. So they they'll be very very disappointed. The with that. nil, I think, is just salt yeah. in the wound. Like not yeah. even one point on the board. And will that be like an emergency meeting now down in Sharks, or will that be? What you just said there, we had a lot of injuries. It happens. They'll probably they'll probably try to try to shake it off. You know <laughs> yourself whenever after after a, a, a loss like that, you just want to shake it off and just get confidence back. Say no, no, no. The box are coming back. The mm. got, got players coming back and just try and forget about that and <laughs> just move on because yeah. they they haven't been doing poorly. Like it's been a it's they they're quite high up and I think they they've got a couple of games in hand so they can still move up the the ladder quite quite mm. well. So it's it's not all lost. Is yeah, it? well hopefully. Poor Sharks on Monday morning review was disgusting. Um, I hate those Monday mornings. So yeah, like, oh morning. God, hold on. <laughs> I'll put some secret cotton wool in my ear because I'm going to get it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's time for our never stop competing moment of the week. And we talked about it there a couple of seconds ago. The Australia comeback from 20 point, 21 points down to win 39-34 in the Principality Stadium. Well done, Australia. You get, her, you get our never stop competing moment of the week together with Bank of Ireland. And before we wrap up this episode, because we have Mr. Louis Ludic in here, we want to ask him about his career and the question we posed to you sir we gave you a bit of homework was 
top three players you played with and also played against. Now, best of luck. You're probably going to burn some bridges <laughs> here because you play yeah. with a lot of fellas. So, it's, what do you um, think? Yeah, it's very di it's very difficult. Um, I've been I've been very very fortunate to have played with and against some phenomenal players, and it's it was a, it was very difficult, especially the ones I've played against. Um, played with, it probably. Um, it's got, probably going to be quite difficult, and a lot of guys, a lot of people might not know all of them, but but let's see. So, uh, Jock Fury. This is who you're playing with. Played first. with, sorry, yeah. yeah. So, played with. The first three is, is Jock Fury. I played with um, at the Lions. Um, absolute phenomenal player, like by far the best player I've played with. Wow, like, yeah, big statement. He, yeah, Jock wow. Fury has been, like, if he, he moved to Japan, and I think he, if he stayed in South Africa, played for the box, he would have been. One of the best box ever played. Um, he, he's just phenomenal. Um, secondly, it's it's very close, but um, I would say Ruan Pinar. Yes, nice. Ruan Pinar, just phenomenal. One of the most natural players I've ever played with. He was just just incredible. And then third um, was John Smith. Yeah. So I must say, like as a as a captain, as I've got this story with John Smith. That's the type of captain he was. He, uh, Mayor Bosman was um, was a young guy coming through. I think it was nineteen or twenty. Made his debut for the box, and before before the team meeting, I think it was before captain's run or before the game. John Smith went to Mayor Bosman and said, "Listen, I'm going to ask you what the first, second, and third play is going to be in the game, and so that you are prepared. So whenever I ask this, just off the cuff, that you know and you prepared, and." just that 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 instilled the confidence in the team so whenever it was in the huddle he asked that question and may was prepared boom 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 the three and everybody's like wow this guy's he knows his his stuff and he, he's ready to play so that's the type of captain he is he was just he, he knew what to get how to get uh, what to get out of his team and how to do that so that's a lot amazing. of times he's maybe like a Bismarck Duplessis was maybe a better talent but that's why he started. He's that type of character was just was just phenomenal. So very intelligent, yeah. Very, very intelligent yeah. and just knew how to manage the team. Nice. So so playing playing against is, is very <laughs> difficult. There's there's just so many and especially at back. Mm -hmm. There's some forwards I've played against like um Kevin Mialamu, um Richie McCaw, um Jerry Collins, like there's just some of these names wow. are just phenomenal. Legends. Legends and of the game, legends yeah. of the game, uh, uh, Dan Carter, Sonny Bill Williams, like this, just, <laughs> just, it's very, very difficult. But if I have to choose guys that that I played against, that ever I I was matched up one on one on a wing, I would I would go that route because it's quite easy. Like if you say a, a Richard McCaw, a, a Dan Carter, very like obvious the, it's ones, it's yeah. obvious mm -hmm. ones. But if you go with well, like head on head, really um, one on one challenges. It was very difficult. My debut, I played. I was nineteen or twenty, and I played debut against Waratahs. So nice. Uh, <laughs> and I played against Lottie Tikiri the um, for my first oh my against wow. wing. So I was this skinny. Welcome to kid, Europe, exactly. <laughs> and I was running onto the field, and I was looking at this. Giants. I think that game. He, I don't know if it was his hundredth game or because he <laughs> ran first in, um, on the field and. I'm like, why would the coaches pick me? <laughs> this guy, he was just a monster. And I, so to make my debut against him was, and I actually had a decent game. So I was very, <laughs> very happy about that. But that was one of the guys that I thought was, was just phenomenal. I played yeah. against. It's a good one. Um, then Lelia Masaga. I don't know if you've ever, if you, he played for the Chiefs for, for quite a while. I don't know if he ever played for the, for, for New Zealand, for the All Blacks. But he was for not whenever I knew he was playing, he was just one of those guys that, like Ripini Kaka Kanibuka. Yeah. I never played against him, but he was almost that type of player that uh, you just don't know how you're going to stop him. He was just <laughs> so quick and so powerful. It was just, he was just phenomenal. So that would be one of the wingers I would um, say. And then Rene Ranger. Yes, I played beast. quite a few times again, Renault Ranger, and he was just the same, like just so powerful and just got just so much speed. Mm -hmm. So and footwork was just fun, just in, crazy. And a lot of um, a lot of these New Zealand guys, they would, it's quite strange, like they would put their socks down to the to their um, to their ankles, and they would just 
use Vaseline or something just to s <laughs> like oil, just oil their legs. Just so just these them. powerful legs is just not enough. They have to make it silky. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever you tackle, you just it slips out of your out of your hands. So they these powerful guys use these shiny legs just running through you. It was just crazy. So they they just made it so difficult, and especially mm. playing them in New Zealand. And with so much confidence and so much power. So, but I know that's maybe a little bit different, the, the, but those three guys, I would say, was the most powerful runners I ever played against. No, that's wow. a good list. I like the yeah. way you didn't just go with the standard, like Rich McGaugh, Dan character, like you actually thought about it. They're yeah. good ones. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you burned many bridges there. So, well done. You got through there nicely. Uh, <laughs> Explained himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, we'll have to get you do that some stage throughout the season. Your, Absolutely, your best yeah. and worst. Um, but for that, for this show, that's it, guys. Thank you so much, Louis, for coming in again. Lindsay, thank you so much as thank always you for your expertise. And of course, a big thank you to Bank of Ireland, proud supporters of the four Irish provinces. We'll catch you next week, guys. Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. <laughs> <laughs>